Joining us now is Arizona's Democratic Senator Mark Kelly. He's in Detroit this morning on the campaign trail for the Harris campaign. Good morning to you, Senator. Good morning, Margaret. Uh, I, I want to talk to you about Arizona, but let's start in Michigan, which is where you are right now. And it is going to be such a key state to a potential Harris or Trump victory. Um, Vice President Harris is facing challenges among black men, working class people, as well as the Muslim and Arab populations skeptical of the White House support for Israel's wars. What are you hearing on the ground there from voters? Well, my wife Gabby Giffords and I have been out here for a couple days. Uh, we've been campaigning across the country, Michigan. I've been in uh, North Carolina, Georgia as well. I'll be back to Arizona here soon. Uh, the vice president was out here speaking to Muslim uh, organizations and the Arab community um, about what is at stake uh, in this election and addressing the concerns that they have. Well, we're hearing uh, issues about the economy, about gun violence, um, about, uh, you know, supporting American families and the difference between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. You know, Kamala Harris, who has a vision for the future of this country, Donald Trump, who just wants to drag us backwards. Today in Dearborn, Michigan, there's a funeral service for an American man who was killed in Lebanon by an Israeli airstrike. It just underscores how that community you're talking about out in Michigan feels some of what's happening in a personal way to their community. Given how close this race is, um, do you think this war and the expectation it could escalate could cost Democrats both a seat in the Senate and potentially the presidency? Margaret, uh, nobody wants to see escalation, and it's tragic when any innocent person, whether it's an American or Palestinian, uh, lo lose their life in a conflict. Uh, tomorrow's one year since October 7th when Israel was violently attacked. Uh, Israel has a right to defend itself, uh, not only from Hamas, but from Hezbollah and from the Iranians. Um, but. You know, I and my wife, you know, we feel for the community here who's been affected by this. And that's why the vice president uh, was out here earlier a few days ago meeting with that community. But it's a live issue. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, um, there is an ongoing conflict in the Middle East. Israel is, you know, fighting a war now on, I think it's fair to say, uh, two fronts and then being attacked. Uh, by the Iranians as well, and uh, they they need to defend themselves, and we need to support our Israeli ally. Uh, at the same time, when women and children lose their life, innocent people in a conflict, it is it is tragic. Uh, you do sit on the Senate Intelligence Committee, and so I know you know how intense the efforts are by foreign actors to try to manipulate voters going into November. Um, just uh, this Friday, Matthew Olson, the lead on election threats at the Department of Justice, told CBS the Russians are, quote, highlighting immigration as a wedge issue. That is such a key issue in Arizona. Are you seeing targeted information operations really focusing in on Arizonans right now? Not only in, in Arizona and other battleground states, it's the Russians, the Chinese, the Iranians, and it's significant. And we need to do a better job getting the message out to the American people that there is a, a huge amount of misinformation. Uh, if you're looking at stuff on Twitter, on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, and it's political in nature, and you might, might think that that person responding to that political article or who made that meme up is an American. It could be, it could look like a U.S. service member. There is a very reasonable chance, I would put it in the 20 to 30 percent range, that the content you are seeing, the comments you are seeing, uh, are coming from one of those three countries, Russia, Iran, China. Uh, we had a hearing recently uh, yeah. with the uh, FBI director, the DNI, and uh, the head of the National Security Agency. And we, we talked about this, and we talked about getting the word out. And it's up to us, so thank you for asking me the question, because it's up to us, the people who serve in Congress and, and the White House, to get the information out there that there is a tremendous amount of misinformation 
in this election, yeah. and it's not going to stop on November 5th. Understood, um, and we will do our best to help parse that for viewers. Uh, but on the topic of the border, uh, President Biden did announce just this past week new regulations to keep in place that partial asylum ban uh, that he rolled out back in June. That's what's credited with helping to bring down some of the border crossing numbers in recent weeks. It was supposed to be a temporary policy um, dependent on how many people were crossing at a time. Do you think this is the right long-term policy or is this just a gimmick to bring down numbers ahead of the election? Well, the right long-term policy is to do this through legislation. And we were uh, a day or two away from doing that, passing strong border security legislation supported by the vice president, negotiated by the vice president and the president and his uh, right. Department of Homeland Security with but Democrats this is not and Republicans. This is bipartisan. This isn't. But the, the legislation was killed by Donald Trump. We were really close to getting it passed. That's the correct way to do, the, do this. When you can't do that, Margaret, when a former president interrupts the legislative process the way he did, which is the most hypocritical thing I've ever seen in my three and a half years in the Senate. After mm -hmm. that happened, the only other option is executive actions. And this has gone from what was chaos and a crisis at our southern border to somewhat manageable. And if you're the border, yep. border patrol, you know, this is, this, you need this. I mean, otherwise, it is unsafe for border okay. patrol agents for CBP officers, for migrants, for communities in southern Arizona. So um, yeah. it's unfortunate that this was the step, these were the steps that had to be taken. Okay. But that's because the former president didn't allow us to do this through legislation. Senator, we have to leave it right there.